Hanging Dude, there it that is. Smiley Kaufman for 61. Wow. I'm Smiley Kaufman, and this is The Smiley Show. Welcome back to The Smiley Show. Once again, here <laughs> on site at the Tour Championship at Eastlake Golf Club. In fact, we've got the Eastlake Pro Shop right behind us. This is a tough scene for Charlie. As, so, as someone who's a big merched Pro Shop guy, I can just see him eyeing some of the rope hats in the Eastlake Pro Shop that sit in our peripherals. <sighs> there's, there's some good t-shirts I've seen. There, I, I'm, I'm trying to get... We came in here the other night when it was a little darker, so I couldn't get a full scope mm-hmm. of the merch, but this morning... Walked in, I was like, I wonder You're, if there's a way I can use my badge to get in there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 100%. I mean, that there's a door right there. We just door probably, oh, wait. Hold on. Hold on. I'm getting breaking news here. We have a report. We have a breaking news report. Mm-hmm. We're going live on the scene to our IHOP correspondent, Smiley Kaufman. Smiley, you have breaking news, please. What, what, what's the report? <laughs> uh, report uh, that, I, that I just happened to be walking out of the elevator <laughs> this morning. And to my... Surprise. <laughs> so, surprise or delight? Delight. <laughs> I see, I'm looking down on my phone and I look up and I see Hideki Matsuyama's translator with carrying a drink tray of big gulps and printed on these big gulps, I hop. Three big cups and then a big plastic bag. I'm just going to assume they were pancakes <laughs> and just nine sides of little small syrup packets it was about to be a feast in uh in the hotel today and and luckily i mean it's just it's just great to see it confirmed and i hope honestly that hideki is just doing this as a ploy knowing i was about to leave and just say hey go down there <laughs> with ihop and just Sit be IHOP standing dummy. there for like between the window <laughs> of 8 and 9 30 and just keep on walking back and forth until we can get the smiley show seeing this live in action just to kind of get us on their trail thinking that, that this is a thing and maybe maybe that's what happened or maybe these just guys wanted some ihop this morning <laughs> if it's an elaborate ruse and or marketing play more power to hideki and his camp it very well I, could I have been I'm, I'm not gonna go all in that this was their breakfast this morning i'm gonna i'm going to believe that potentially this is a bit what do you think his order is at ihop like is he like a standard buttermilk pancakes guy is he doing chocolate chips blueberries yeah i think he just mixes up different things in his pancakes that's just what that's my guess it's it's a solid guess i did i'm dying to do this ihop video with hideki <laughs> now like for just translators <laughs> caddies us these pancakes. cups were big man and i i just have a hard time believing that hideki's ordering like three diet cokes in the morning i'm kind of hoping that they're just big old chocolate milks. Like that's kind of what I was hoping. We're, we're in these big gold by hop and, and the logoing. I mean, there's, these are the biggest blue cups I've ever seen just with IHOP in, in nice white. It looked like a big Pepsi. Uh, it's probably not a good place to say Pepsi. This is a Coke town, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> fair point. I, that is, that is hilarious though. Like I, when we got that text this morning in our production group chat, uh, I was like, he's, he's making this up. There's just no way. Yeah. But he's Hideki. It was awesome. Big, big awesome. IHOP guy. Really, really big news out of the, <laughs> out of the Smiley Show camp this morning. I'm glad. I'm glad we got that cut in for the breaking news. Uh, so IHOP, reach out. Don't re- Well, reach out to us too. Help us set something up. We're here for it. Hideki's clearly here for it. We, well, uh, yeah, the cool thing about us now is that we can go to hi- IHOP in the morning. Yep. You know, we're able to go to Culver's for a nice little early afternoon lunch. And then during the evening, you know, we, have, we can go to either walk-ons or canes and just kind of get lost in the sauce a bit. I, I, it sounds like a great meal if my metabolism was 10 years younger. Uh, <laughs> we're, we're, we're needing to make some lifestyle changes here. I will say on the back end of Monday's episode, I had multiple people reach out and tell me that there is a Culver's maybe 20 minutes from me in Durham, North Carolina. <laughs> There's a, there's a Culver's in Apex, apparently, which is, I don't know if that's the best news ever or the worst news ever. Well, it, it, this is what's going to happen now. You know, you're going to finish your rounds of golf at, at Hope Valley, and instead of going into the men's grill and, and hanging and having a drink and eating lunch, you say, guys, I got to get out here. I got to get back to uh, the kids to to help out, and you're just going to... You're just going to plug in Culver's, and you're going to be back in 45 minutes. I got to be honest with you. One of my favorite post-bad round traditions is just 
pigging out on bad fast food. Oh, uh, that's that was my Monday qualifier deal. You know, yeah. anytime I was on the West Coast, if I missed the Monday, which most of the time you do, uh, the reward is is punishing your body with in and out. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Which, which we've also covered this on the show. We're a big fast food show, apparently. Big fast food guys. Yeah. I, I will go to the Culver's and carry and get some curds because I I'm obsessed with that place now. So uh, Culver's IHOP, you know, the whole the whole nine yards. We're 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 doing well. Let's in shoot the a fast masters this category. year. We we finished our show so late that the only thing that opened was Wendy's <laughs> and we both just happened to go to the same Wendy's <laughs> trying to go find food. And, and it was, Hey, good to see you, man. <laughs> <laughs> just two cars behind each other in the drive through going to sit for the same spicy chicken sandwich. Well, loved, I, I, Fran, I was telling Fran, I was going to get it like, oh, should I just get the, the chicken snack wrap thing or whatever? And she's like, yeah, that's probably like the best thing to get there. And then <laughs> say, what do you true. want? It's like, I'll have the double baconator. <laughs> It's, it's hard. It's hard to pass up on the the baconator at Wendy's. Uh, uh, man, that's, that's enough. That's, <laughs> is, is, is that, okay, that's a, that's just about enough fast food talk. Uh, because we have the 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 tour championship, the the finale of the PGA Tour season mm-hmm. to get into here, and we got a lot of great guests lined up for you today. We've got Andrew Green to talk about the golf course, the restoration project that he's done here, uh, which we've heard some interesting comments from players on already this week of just, you know, getting used to a place that feels very, very new to them. I mean, Xander it's a, Shoffley, it's a new golf course. It, uh, that was crazy to me to hear Xander Shoffley say where he's like the East Lake whisperer it, that nothing feels the same to him other than maybe just how to walk from a hole to another hole. That that was wild to me. So we have we have Andrew on to talk about that, and we have Keegan Bradley on as well. Really yeah. excited about the BM, BMW Championship winner, fourth in the FedEx Cup standings. So we're excited to get to that. Um, so Smiley, let's just kind of start big picture on where we stand coming into this into this tournament, just the FedEx Cup. Uh, you you were able to get out and kind of walk a few holes. You mm-hmm. still have a few more to to get to before you're finally prepped for the tournament on Thursday. But what are your impressions of the golf course? What you've seen thus far. So I've never seen the golf course in person, and this is my first time on the grounds uh, when we did oh, our show on Monday. You know, I've I've always watched East Lake over the years, um, the, whether it be the Tour Championship or when it was before that. You know, growing up as a kid, when it wasn't the Tour Championship, um, I I kind of felt like the golf course on T TV always just kind of like felt blah to me. Like it never really like did anything for me. It just you know it was it seemed like a, a good golf course and, and one that I would enjoy playing, but just, it's not like a picturesque holes. Like you're going to be at, uh, with, uh, you know, going on the West coast or just these, these signature type holes. It's just good hole after good hole. Yeah. And every player that I talked to about the golf course, they all loved it. They loved playing it. They just felt like there was good hole after good hole. So from my perspective, it's like, okay, you know, watching it on TV, I never really felt like anything crazy ever happened mm. besides that par three, uh, 15th hole, you yes. know, that seemed like to be the drama of the golf course. Other than that, it seemed, you know, where guys were making birdies, but like their bogeys were kind of boring because they hit in the rough. Now from being on the course and walking it, you know, obviously it, I'm seeing these greens for the first time. I don't know where they used to be. So I'm just seeing it for what it is. And I think it's going to be very, very challenging. Um, the The number I got from Austin Kaiser uh, was this would if, it, if it's just a regular stroke play tournament, everybody's starting at even. He said single under par would win. Wow. And he said even something closer to even is what he felt. Really? That that's the words out of his mouth. Um, now, do you think he's saying that because there's still, I mean, as, as much work was done the off season, there was a, a 13 week grow in period for the new grasses. And by the way, apologies, we, we have, we're, we're in a high traffic area here. We have lots of players and personnel coming through. We actually had a delightful 10 minute conversation with Sean Foley. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> covered a lot in that conversation. Hope to see him again soon. But uh, that, that is what's happening in and around us because we're here in the clubhouse uh, at East Lake. But just talking about, you know, getting back to, to Austin Kaiser's point of, you know, the, this is, it's obviously 
one year turnaround from the course last year. So do you think his assessment on the score and the difficulty of the course is related to the time it's going to take for this thing to bed in, the firmness of greens, or you think it's just yeah. the actual restoration and the way bunkers have been moved and things like that? No, it, it'll it'll eventually get back to where, where guys are going to be able to score and, um, and be able to hold shots. But coming out of the rough, I think uh, the example that Austin gave me was on the, I believe, fifth hole. And maybe it was six I think it was six I'm, I'm still like learning a holes in yeah. my head but uh, they said he hit it in the right rough and hit a, a wedge onto the front of the green like landed one yard onto the green and went into the back bunker on a green that's wow. 35 yards long so wow. he just said that out of the rough you just have no chance to hold anything um, because of the firmness and that's interesting too because if you look at the stats on this Andrew Green, as part of this restoration, added five acres of fairway, went from 24 acres to 29 acres, and there's actually 20 acres less of rough, went from 90 acres of rough to 70 acres of rough. And I think Andrew will kind of, will cover that in our conversation about the way the fairways were changed and the the, the subtle regrassing of those fairways to a different type of zoysia. Uh, but so... If you're a player and you're in the tournament this week and you have that in mind, you've seen the way the balls reacted out of the rough, you've seen how firm the greens are, how do you game plan for that? How do you strategize for that? I mean, obviously don't hit it in the rough, but like, is there any major strategy shift you think these guys are going to employ now that they've kind of seen the way the course is behaving? You know, I, I think uh, you really don't ever know until the gun goes off, right? Like when you get out there and you start to see kind of how the golf course is really reacting uh, with, with tournament pins. You know, a lot of times these whole locations they cut are going to be um, pretty benign in the middle of the green. But when you get them on the corners, that's when you really start to feel how difficult a golf course can really play. So I imagine that'll be the strategy for most guys. Probably err on the side of caution, not be aiming at as quite as many flag sticks. But... I'll say this, that when guys have wedges in their hands in the fairway, it doesn't matter what golf course they're playing, they're going to aim at flag sticks. Mm. But when you get on these par threes that, that have some length, anything with middle irons and long irons, they're going to be saying, all right, where's my miss? Where, do I, where can I get up and down from? Because um, I think at this point they'll know where, like what's reacted Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday with, with mid to long irons. And, and they probably know it's like, hey, even if I'm in the fairway, I, I can't be aiming at these flags. Like these, like this is the only flag I can be somewhat aggressive with. So um, that's all what these guys are doing this week. The yeah. preparation, um, you know, it's, it's unusual to see so many guys out um, on a Monday just listening to guys' conversations. They just said, you know what, we we need to be out here um, seeing both sides two times. A lot of shoot at, at uh, St. Jude this year. I see JT on. Wednesday and he's like going to play the back nine that morning uh in a pro-am and I was like did you play the front he's like nah nothing changes so it just kind of goes to show like when yeah. these guys know a golf course they they typically prioritize rest and recovery especially coming off of a stretch mm -hmm. but this week these guys are putting a lot of work in Monday through Wednesday to try to learn this golf course to try to be more prepared than the other guy because you know, these guys are playing for a lot of money this week and a tour championship. It, it, that was really interesting for Monday's show. We were stationed right there at the first tee to see all those guys <laughs> were making that same two time Literally. zone trip from Denver out there getting work in early. Four guys in the top 10 just like rolling right through. Yeah, getting ready for a big week. So we now are going to get right to some of these conversations we've had. We have Keegan Bradley coming up now, who just, as we, as we mentioned, just won the BMW championship at Castle Pines. From there, we'll talk to Andrew Green about this East Lake restoration. And then we'll come back with, we think we found a good solve for our one and done pick yeah. format. I think we got a little something that's going to work and maybe we'll employ this in, in the years going forward. But that's the kind of run of show. So we'll waste no further time. We'll get right to our conversation with Keegan Bradley now. All right, we are back on The Smiley Show with another special guest. Thrilled to have Keegan Bradley joining the show after fresh off his win at Castle Pines for the BMW Championship, moving from 50th in the FedEx Cup to 4th, and now in a place where you've had some success here. Mm -hmm. 2011 PGA Championship at Atlanta Athletic Club. What have the past few days been like, just the whirlwind of winning mm -hmm. and, and traveling here and getting ready for the, the tour's final event of the season? Yeah, it's been wild. I... I don't normally ever sleep very well on Sunday nights anyways, but after a win, I, I basically don't sleep. I, <laughs> I, I can't shut down. And so it's always a struggle to get back on the right schedule. And, uh, you know, I, I flew home, saw my family for a day and came here yesterday. And so 
but it's so weird in golf. You don't get any time to enjoy anything. Mm. Now I'm back out here on this brutal course with a chance to win the FedEx Cup. The stress is all back in there. So, uh, but it's great. It's all great. right. So, Keegan, I just want to rewind about nine days. Let's take us ourselves back to the St. Jude Championship and towards the weekend. So Saturday and Sunday, you know, you're in a position to where you're trying to make it into the BMW Championship just enough for an opportunity to have a chance to win. And we all know what's at stake when you make the BMW Championship. You're in all the signature events. And for you, you're going to be the, the captain of the Ryder Cup team, just like not having the stress of having to worry about sponsors exemptions, yeah. having a schedule, all those things that us players think about. For you now, you made it. Your season is set. But I talked to Shane Lowry, and he said he played with you on Saturday. <laughs> yeah. And he said he has never, ever seen Keegan Bradley this like stressed out about – you know, trying to make it to the BMW. It was so horrible. I, I, uh, <laughs> I it, it felt like, you know, that tour school feeling of just like, yeah. there's no enjoyment. It's just yeah. like, you're clocking in, you're going to work and you're trying to do this. And, you know, I went into Memphis 39th. I was closer to making the tour championship than to missing, you know, so. You think you're safe. Yeah. And like, then all of a sudden you're, you're not. You know, Once I, he checks that official projected right. thing, you're like, oh my God. And, you know, out here on the PGA Tour, there's scoreboards everywhere. So I was trying my best not to look at these, but like all of a sudden you're like looking at a bird and then you see 50 second projected on the FedEx Cup and then I want to die, you know? <laughs> so like it was, it was brutal because, you know, now with a family, with kids, like, you know, like mm. not having the structure of the schedule would have been mm. horrible. Yeah. And I also was, those are my favorite tournaments to play in. Yeah. And then... Top top that with how what I want to do in my career, but then also with what I want to do with the Ryder Cup. Like I want to be around the guys. Yeah, I want to be around the guys in the locker room. Mm -hmm. I want to be around the guys, you know, playing a practice round, seeing them play on Thursday. Like all little things that I may have missed out on. Yeah, and uh, what a relief it was. Well, it would have made for a very challenging year, but once you made it through, uh, you know, you had to just be elated just for the opportunity. And sometimes when just the stress falls off, like the game shows up and the freedom is there. And you saw that with yourself, Adam Scott, and a couple other guys that, that barely made it mm -hmm. through that had good weeks, like Alex Noren. So when did you know at the BMW Championship at Castle Pines that this could be a really special week? So I was playing the pro am on uh, on Wednesday, and it was super super windy that day, mm -hmm. like the hardest it blew. And on the third hole, I hit this six iron into this this really tough green, and like I hit it in a flush day, and it came out perfectly where I was looking. Hit exactly my number, went to like twelve feet, mm. and I hit that shot. And it, I remember walking to the green, like, geez, that was. That felt really good, mm. and and I swear to you, I did not miss a shot. I, I hit that weird that drive wow. on fourteen on Sunday where it went in the went in the trees. It wasn't even that bad. I got caught up in the wind. Other than that, I, I did not really miss a shot after that. Like it was that solid. You know what I mean? And right. and uh, I don't know what it was. Some, this happened to me at Hartford last year too, where missed the cut at the U.S. Open, and then went to Hartford and played the best golf of my life. It was unbelievable. So there's no, nothing I can point to other than that that one shot. It just felt great. Did you find anything? Like, was there anything that you did on the... No. Okay. Great. I, I, to, to tell you the truth... I wish that I happened to me. I didn't, <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I didn't play that bad at Memphis. I really struggle on that course. Yeah. I don't know what it is. I, I did awkward. when it wasn't it's a playoff awkward. event. And, like, it's scary because... That's sort of a really important event for us. So like yeah. I gotta figure out how to play well there. But yeah. I think one of the more fascinating parts of last week from a fan perspective was all the calculations and math that went into every single mm -hmm. shot. Like you're at sixty four hundred feet of elevation. Then a lot of those holes have massive elevation changes yep. up or down. And then you talking about the wind earlier in the week that we saw on, on the weekend as well. well. Fun for fans to watch. Yeah. Fun Not for necessarily for the no. players' caddies or the reporters that are trying to figure yeah, out trying what to do it on the fly. On. Well, I, I thought it was so cool having an ear into the conversation you had on seventeen with Scott Vale, where you're going through numbers. He tells you it's two twenty two. Backs you off the shot right before you're about to hit and said, let me just check to see what you hit yesterday. 225, said that's perfect five iron. You, of course, you stiff it, make birdie, the tournament at that point effectively over. I, I am curious 
if, if you could, for, for the amateurs listening or watching who don't have a sense of what goes into determining the number for every single shot you're hitting, how different was it last week at Castle Pines from what you might see this week at East Lake? Yeah, so I got to Colorado. I went straight to the course on Monday. It's been all day Monday and Tuesday figuring out the yardages. Because for me, that's how I play. I play, you know, ball striking. And my, my, one of the best things that I can do is I practice hitting my numbers mm-hmm. like I, I don't ever go to the range and drop a bucket of balls and hit like i'm always trying to hit a certain number hit a certain amount of shots inside of uh, proximity so like this is how i play so when i go mm-hmm. to elevation it's really stressful for me like i have to get this dialed mm-hmm. in and know exactly the yardage so we we went out and we figured that out i had the quad we had some from when we played it last in 2014 and we made up a chart from eight, nine, ten percent. So okay. we would get the real yardage. We called it when we got the adjusted yardage. That was the real number. Okay. The adjusted adjusted was with the percentage. So we would go through that and we would get that down to where. So then I would throw out the the actual number that'd be gone. So then I would be back to the sea level number, and then I was just playing the way I normally would play. It's really cool stuff. Yeah, I. I wish I would have had that type of system. <laughs> yeah. You should have seen all the chicken scratch on my on my piece of paper I was trying yeah. to work off of. And I was like, wait, have I done altitude yet or have I done elevation? I, I There's probably plenty of times where I was like, oh, this guy's got the wrong club in his right. hands. But really, it was just my bad math. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But keying in on uh, the BMW Championship, you know, one of the scenarios I wanted to walk you through was – you know, you kind of already mentioned it, but final round of Q school, and then we already talked about when how difficult it was for you to make it in, and it's sitting around refreshing your phone. Yeah. So you got final round of Q school, you're done at the St. Jude, you're refreshing your phone, and then the final day at BMW Championship, if you can rank which one you were most nervous for, which one were you the most comfortable for, that would be interesting to see. Like final round of Q school, at home, nothing is in your hands at St. Jude. And then the final round of BMW. So Q schools in a category of its own. So okay, that's wow. yeah, that's there. like that's like I, I always I always think back now like I'm I'm such a better player now. I don't, and knowing what I know now, I don't know if I could get through a tour school. Mm. Just just knowing how important how is. important it yeah. is. Mm. Like back in the day, I when I was doing it, it was it was so like almost more fun because I was like doing what I want love yeah. to do. Now it would be like horrifying. Um, and then St Jude. The afternoon was just miserable. The the BMW on Sunday, I I sort of feel my calmest in those in those rounds. It's I know it's really strange to say like I'm more nervous on Friday when I'm on the cut line mm. than I am coming down the stretch of to to win a tournament. It's a different type of nerves, and I I've over the last handful of years I've definitely felt a lot more comfortable in those positions. And so I would I would honestly put BMW the easiest. It wasn't yeah, easy. I, yeah. I knew that's what he was gonna say. It was, it was it's like the riding most a bike. You know yeah. how to win. Yeah. It's it's more of like what I was meant to do. The other stuff is just like just work. I know? think a lot of people a lot of, if you ask a lot of players, they'd feel the exact same way. This is what you prepare for, mm. this is the situations that you practice and spend all those hours for is for moments like that. Um, mm. but the one thing I gotta ask you here is on the eighteenth hole. You know, once Adam missed his putt, that probably was the most nervous you were at the entire week. Because now you're like, all right, buddy, let's not run this thing yeah, by. We're going to get this thing, thing right yeah. in there. <laughs> and because I, I, I told uh, somebody that was standing right next to me, I was like, if Adam misses, Keegan's missing this putt. Yes. Like, <laughs> yes. like, he is a thousand sure. percent not making this. Yes. He, is, he is going to be playing a high line and soft. Yeah. If it breaks, it breaks. <laughs> well, it's, it's surreal when you're in that moment of like... I'm watching Adam putt, and, I, and I'm telling myself, you got to be ready for him to make this. Yeah. The shot he hit in there from the bunker. Oh, unreal. Unreal. Because <laughs> to be honest with you, I was thinking, all right, you make par, you win the tournament. And then I'm, I'm, I'm looking at Adam, and I'm like, geez, okay, hold on a second. If he makes this, and then because I'm thinking he's on the down slope, like to hit that ball on the green would have been 10 out of 10. To hit it on the right quadrant there. Nobody was making... At birdies there on no, that 18th hole. It, it was spectacular, and then it's surreal when he when you're in that position and they miss that putt, and you're like, "Holy cow! I just won the tournament." Just yeah. 
like I got this little Sorry, buddy, yeah, stay calm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, Settle down now, yeah, buddy. In, in, <laughs> I was talking to Dr. Mo. He's my helps me with my mental side, and he was like, "You know, your routine on that last putt was like horrible." Was it? I, I was like, I, I was getting that over with as fast as I could. So, but yeah, oh it was uh, it was it was great. Well, your highs and lows of your career are are interesting, right? They're so different than you know the ebbs and flows that I experienced on mm-hmm. the tour. You know, your highs have been super high. You've won major championships. You've been a part of big Ryder Cups and and Presence Cups. And your lows were documented all last year with, you know, really having a good year. You know, Mm -hmm. like you've played really well. Just unfortunately, it was documented that you're left off of that Ryder Cup team. And let's fast forward now, how things have changed, right? It seems like this year you finally got over the hump with just the break of your mm-hmm. career. You get named a Ryder Cup captain. Now you speak into existence to everybody. You say, you know, my playing career, I feel like I'm still in my peak. I still like I can still play. Mm-hmm. So to go out and then win the BMW championship right before these picks are about to be made, you're already an assistant President's Cup captain. You haven't been part of a team in 10 years. So to me, it feels like nothing but positives ahead for Keegan Bradley. For sure. I... When, when, when I got the call to be the Ryder Cup captain, it was, first off, a complete shock. Yeah. Mm. But uh, the part of the call, the first things they said were, we want you to be the first playing captain since Arnold Palmer in 1962. Wow. wow. So okay. like they, they, it wasn't like, we, j- we don't think you can play anymore, mm. or we don't, you know, you're in this ceremonial role. Like They made it very clear to me, and other players, top, top guys that are on the team, said, we really want you to be on the team. So, you know, it was definitely a part of me because you start to think not like a player as a captain. Mm-hmm. You start mm-hmm. to think, and, I, and I, I have to catch myself because I start. you start to think of not what you would normally think of as a player. You right. want to do what's best for the other guys. Mm-hmm. And then I have to sort of sometimes remind myself about, you know, how I'm, I, I'm still, I think I'm playing the best golf of my, of my life. Yeah. Wow. And I think I have, you know, years ahead of me here of good golf and um i'm so proud to be you know the Ryder cup captain and the uh, vice captain for jim furick and and have a chance to make the president's cup team because i thought when i played in my first Ryder cup in 2012 i was going to play on these teams for the next 15 years Mm. why wouldn't you and you know i i I tell people you never know when your last shot is in one of these things Mm -hmm. and my last shot as i sit here now was the final deciding point to jamie donaldson at glenn eagles for the Ryder cup so you've had to sit on that that bag is still on not on still yeah so you know to to be in the conversation and and to be you know with these guys this means a lot to me and um I, i really don't take it for granted it's a lot of pressure and a lot of it's a lot of weight to it Keegan, this is, we're a well-documented dad pod here. We're both mm-hmm. relatively new fathers, really <laughs> loving that whole process. And I thought it was so cool seeing on your Twitter, yeah. after winning the BMW Championship, you, you shout out to your wife, Jillian, your mm-hmm. sons, Logan and Cooper, uh, the way they decorated your 2018 BMW Championship trophy. So what is, is, is this, is, this is Logan's stuffed animal, Puda? Am I yeah, saying that right? Puda, yeah. Puda, yeah. okay. <laughs> so give me a little backstory on Puda. So Puda... Is a big player in our house. He's uh-huh. been he's been Logan's okay. uh, you know blanket or teddy bear that he sleeps with forever, and so they went in. They didn't tell me. Logan started to tell me on Saturday night, and my wife stopped him. But then I had him tell me. They, my wife didn't want me to know anything about this. But they took <laughs> my 2018 trophy, and they put Puda in there. And Logan spent the night without sleeping with Puda. Wow, that's which was big. which was like. Okay. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. And then they plucked, things are looking up. Yes, <laughs> they, pl- they plucked some hair off of my my dog Penny and t- put it on top of it. If you zoom into that photo, you can see it. And as like a good luck charm, and uh, so special. Like the the, the winning as a, not a dad, and then winning as a dad, it, it's not even close. But the, the funny funny story about because my son is all jacked up about me winning, but. After he says, but I really actually wish you didn't make these tournaments because then you'd be home. And I'm like, Logan, you, this is what you, you work hard. You get there. He goes, yeah, I get it. But that's great. But if you didn't make the tournament, you'd be home. I'm like, well, that's nice. Too. <laughs> Pretty yeah. sweet. Yeah, Do yeah. you have the family with you this week? They're coming on Friday. Yeah, that's fantastic. Yes. Yeah. Well, well it's that. hard to pivot off of Puda. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's hard to really to go to the next topic. But I actually want to circle back here. Like, Charlie, this is your first time meeting Keegan. Nicest guy in the world. Right. Like, so fun to talk to. And this guy, when he gets in match play mode, 
not the nicest guy in the world. This guy, <laughs> this guy goes full yes. laser beams. Yeah. Like, I don't know if psychotic's the right word, it might but, be, yeah. but he wants to, he wants to kill you if, yes. if he's playing you. And I think that's such a great quality to have as far as your competitive spirit. Mm -hmm. I mean, we heard the USA chance last week. You're pumping up the crowd like it's a, a Ryder Cup last week in Denver. And I love that you're already in this mode because I, I want to talk to you a bit about you being the Ryder Cup captain and potentially even the President's Cup vice captain or a player. How much, you know, you're going to have to either cater down a little bit towards, you know, being a little bit more right. even keeled as a captain, or are we going to see like, like the Luke Donald handshake right before the front first round and just be like, sorry, pal. <laughs> <laughs> and we know you and Luke are buddies right. too. Well, I think it's really important to be authentic as a captain, mm -hmm. as a vice captain or a captain. I think anytime you try not to be yourself, it doesn't come off right to the team. Mm -hmm. So certainly, you know, as a captain, you have to have a certain amount of poise and, and you know, strategy to how you act. But I also am going to be myself. Yeah. And I think one of the reasons why they've chosen me to be captain is they, they want a little fire. Mm -hmm. Like this, like this, this Ryder Cup of Beth Page is going to be insane. Insane. And you know, they, the the boys, they they, they're all most of the guys on the team that'll be on the team. They're such level, calm guys. Mm -hmm. And I, I I love that about them. And I think I can bring a different side of like you know, a little bit more fire, a little bit more like getting the guys going, getting the have, crowd going. Have you seen old school? Yes. You know, the, when Will Ferrell's in his underwear yeah. in the, in the <laughs> locker room and he's throwing chairs, everybody's got to keep their composure. Yes. That is what I'm picturing. Keegan yes. Bradley's like Photoshop his head I mean, on, like right before we right. go out. I, I <laughs> got to speak to Xander after he won the British Open a second after he walked off the green. And he was talking to me and people like he just finished a practice round. It was bizarre. I, I, wow. I like... I it, after I, I win a tournament, I forget about the British Open. You know, you're so jacked up, and yeah. you're so. And he's talking to people and me, as if we just ran into him on, on off this green right here. It was so. These guys, they're 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 such good dudes, and like I look forward to to being their captain. And we and we definitely look forward to watching it on the way out. Uh, you know, you are fourth in the FedEx Cup, and also number four is what the season win total potentially for the Patriots is going to be. I know. So right, maybe four, four and, four and a half. Yeah. <laughs> let's let's give them the half. Yeah. So the hook is there. Yeah. Are we taking the over? I'm going to take the over. We're yes. going to take the over. Yeah, believe in it because so I'm a big North Carolina football sicko and uh, Drake May. All right, how are we feel about Drake this far? So I got. I just, I would love to see him play. I, I've seen him in the preseason and like, he seems to be getting better and better and better. And I just, it's exciting. It's exciting for a Patriots yes. fan because like there seems to be like extreme talent there. Cause growing up where I grew up, there's no college football. So I didn't right. really see much of him play, but it's exciting time. Yeah. It's, it's, he did a lot with hardly any talent at yeah. Carolina. So I think he, whatever he has with the Patriots, he'll, he'll be able to make it work. I so. love it. I love <laughs> it. Well, you got to give your Boston common golf bit. Oh, do we need to break up Boston Common? I think that people are asking questions as both of the FedEx Cup playoff events have been won by Fro is right. Frog. The yeah, Frog's a mascot. Yeah. Yeah. So a double Frog winner. Like, yeah. do we need to break up the squad? Are they, are they too stacked? No. Yeah. Are, we, are, well, are we, we too stacked? Our whole entire team made it to Atlanta, which is pretty wow. pretty amazing. Yeah, we. it's uh, going to be such a blast. I mean, we Hideki was a late addition to the team. and. Um, geez, we got a pretty good team. <laughs> yeah. pretty do you know squad. anything about his IHOP stuff? I saw it last week, and he eats Chick Fil A every night. Is that what? Well, I no, saw? I saw his uh, translator today with three big gulp IHOPs in the hotel. <laughs> so I just didn't know if 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 this is something that that you were aware of that that he's a big IHOP. Maybe I, a frog pregame meal. Yes, perfect. Could I, I couldn't imagine eating that before playing a tournament, <laughs> but yeah, he's, he's got to figure it out. All right, buddy. That's well, amazing. this has been great. You know, Keegan, I've known you for a long time. You've been a great mentor to me and somebody I could always go to about anything in the game of golf. And uh, it's been a lot of fun watching you succeed. And, and I was pumped to see you get named captain. And I'm hoping uh, to see you be a playing vice captain uh, very soon um, in Montreal next month. Thank you, boys. I appreciate it. All right, Thanks, Thanks for taking the time. What a fun conversation with Keegan Bradley. Really, really good dude. It's good to see him in good spirits. I mean, the I'm, glad, I'm glad you got to see just how, how great of a guy Keegan Bradley is, why he's so well-liked, why he was, you know, named the Ryder Cup captain. You could see it through his personality, what type of guy he is. But 
when he gets on that golf course, it's a totally different human being. And I love that about him. You know, I, I try to embrace that competitive uh, spirit as well. So he's, it's gonna be fun to watch kind of him as a captain and maybe as a playing captain here pretty soon. It's that Boston common frog mentality. Yes, it you know is. I mean? Just second to none. Uh, so that was really fun chat with, with uh, the BMW championship winner, the man who was sitting fourth on the FedEx cup points list headed into the tour championship. And now we're going to get to a conversation with Andrew Green, the architect who did a restoration project in this last year on East Lake. A lot of interesting changes. Players have you know, seen it for the first time, have a lot of wide ranging set of reactions to it. Uh, so it'll be an eventful week for the golf course itself. And we'll get to that conversation right now. All right, we were thrilled to be back here on the Smiley Show at East Lake Golf Club with Andrew Green, a man who's done some extensive work here. Uh, Andrew's done work at a ton of historic, amazing courses. Most recently, you're probably familiar with his work at Oak Hill for the 2023 PGA Championship. There, one really loved and enjoyed another Donald Ross course up there. Uh, but we also have some some personal ties here. Mm-hmm. He's doing some work at Shoal Creek. Yes, your your home not, club. Not yet, but we're getting there. We're getting we're, there. Hopefully, next year is. I think maybe October is. Thing you got is, it. Yes. Yeah. And, and I got to say, in my research for this, I was I was thrilled to learn that I got to give a shout out to my wife here that you're a Hokie as well. I am. Two yeah, degrees from Virginia Tech. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there's so, our ties. Well, it's a lot Go of ties in here. <laughs> so, Andrew, just to get started with, you know, this week, we've heard some comments from some players now who've seen the course for a couple times. You know, what's what's your reaction to what we've heard thus far to the work you've done here at East Lake? Yeah, I think it's it's been interesting. Um, you know, the Oak Hill reaction was probably <laughs> way too positive <laughs> or good to ever think uh, I could relive that. But I, it's I'm really trying to unpack it the last, I don't know, 36 hours or so. And I keep thinking about this idea that, of course, they were familiar with the old yes. East Lake, but it, now it's a real test. Mm-hmm. And we, we did things to really allow you to explore your entire game. And you have to hit shots that are testing those edges. And so I, I probably got them a little uncomfortable, not only in just the idea that it's new, uh, the greens are really firm, uh, but that they're having to hit shots they never hit before. and. You know, we do when we're doing renovation and restoration work, you, you've got a group of members that grow up at places. And right. so there's a lot of familiarity. It's not too far different from mm-hmm. this where the players were very familiar. And so understanding the golf course and, and trying to play shots that maybe they thought, you know, they played before <laughs> and you can't play that shot now is interesting. I thought. Uh, Xander, I think, said something like, there isn't even a tree to aim at that I aimed at. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. It's not that we cut them down, it's just we changed the sight lines. Yeah. yeah. That's so interesting. And, you know, I, I, I see this all the time now when it comes to, to restoration projects and, and stuff like you've done at Eastlake and other places, um, is that you use just pictures, aerial photos from, I think it was 1949 is what I saw. So my question is, is did was this laying around did you have to dig to find this aerial photo was it readily available or let's say you didn't find it now what's the plan i guess that's my question it's like if you didn't have what it looked like back then yeah so i found the photo in a government archive doing a a search um that's kind of a part of my typical process when i come to a club i really want to understand how even if it's a newer course how it's evolved Mm -hmm. you know what decisions have been made so understanding that timeline is important this picture in particular from 1949 was crystal clear like Mm that resolution was really good that helps which in 49 is kind of nuts and then um we also had some pictures from right before george cobb redid the course for the Ryder cup Mm -hmm. and that's when the course really changed from what bobby jones and alexa sterling played um, and so we could pair those two pieces together and it started to really help understand how the golf course presented itself. If we hadn't found, you know, some stuff, I, I don't know. Um, I kept looking for things that reinforced the ideas that I saw mm. and would help tell the story. And, you know, even George Cobb's plan to renovate the golf course had the old course drawn underneath it. Mm. So, you know, we knew the green shapes and things from that. And that, like, so what we're seeing this week for the Tour Championship, where a lot of folks have not seen this golf course, these green complexes, this is matches similar to what it used to be like at 1 to 18? 
Yeah, I, there's, there's there's some wiggle room. Yeah, the first green. So every green actually had two kind of surfaces: a winter and a summer green. In Atlanta, right, yeah. brutal kind of yeah. edges of the the turf spectrum. So sometimes they were like a black and white cookie. Mm. So there was one surface that was made and just one grass on one half and one on the other. Wow. Sometimes it was two different putting surfaces. So four, there was a green on the left and a green on the right. Old 13. Old oh, 13. Okay, never mind. <laughs> and the green on the, there was an oak tree in between. And so we picked the green on the right, mainly because it allowed the golf hole to start to turn. Mm. And a lot of the holes on what's played as the front side now are really just back and forth. You know, there were yeah. soldiers kind of going back and forth. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's things like one green originally was against the boundary. Well, I, I really couldn't put it right on the road mm -hmm. in the modern game. Mm -hmm. So there were a few of those things that we adjusted. Um, number eight is, you know, is this is number my, eight or seven? This number eight. This number eight. Yeah, that one is is an original. Yeah, uh, with the intent of shifting nine tees left and creating a drivable par four. Yeah, I had a good chance to look at that hole, Charlie. It's we we could see it from our, our yeah. set that we had on Monday. The opportunities mainly with like left hole locations was where mm -hmm. you're going to see guys try to hit driver that have the length. I think what's the carry on that? That bunker on the left. Uh, it depends on which tee, right? Yeah. The, the dam tee, I think, is 390, and then the up tee is 330, and then they could play it all yeah. up to 300. So you'll, you'll see guys hit driver probably to left pins. There's one, like, right hole location that's – that if you hit driver to that hole location, it's it's a – you're taking on a huge risk because if you miss that fairway and you hit out of the rough, you're, you're playing for uh, – you'd be lucky to make par. I'm curious on – could be this project or any other project when you're doing a, a restoration of sorts, how much of it is like you're saying, looking at an aerial photo and trying to kind of remain true to the, to the original design and how much of it is you trying to get inside, you know, whether it's George Cobb or Donald Ross's head and, and just think what, what would his intent have been if he was designing this course for the modern game, modern equipment, modern players? Yeah, that's, that's an interesting question. And I think it tends to fall in a little bit of both of not, I don't think I'm ever really seeing strict restoration fitting the modern game, whether it be green speeds mm -hmm. and slopes or uh, the distances, you know, covering bunkers and things, you know, that, that would never work. But if we can take, you know, the green shapes, the green contour kind of uh, ideas and then kind of just manipulate them enough to work today, I think that's where I'm trying to blend. And the hope is, you know, that if, if the original guy was here, he'd be proud or at least mm -hmm. somewhat in agreement <laughs> with, with what we've done. So uh, I was listening to Victor Hovland talk about this the other day, and I spoke with him on the golf course. And, you know, I think initially guys would, uh, immediately figure out that the golf course is different. I think a lot of people, when they showed up, they see the aerial photos. They don't really know what they're getting into as far as just how different it is from what they've played over the last decade to what they're seeing this week. And there was a shot that Victor was describing that I think kind of it it describes a little bit more what these guys are facing this week, and that's on the second hole, the par three, a green that used to be it was a it was a two tier green, if I recall, very narrow. Was it two tiered ish? Yeah. Yeah. It was whatever. It's the the green now is huge. It's a big green, but there's a, a right hole location tucked over a bunker, and Victor was describing the shot as if you go at it, you're 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 bringing in, you're bringing in five, but if you play like three steps left of it, you're gonna have a, like a 40 footer because everything kind of slopes that way. So for a shot like like he's describing, do you feel like it kind of characterizes the type of golf course that East Lake is now? Meaning you have to be a little bit more precise and first, I know this is a part three, but playing from the fairway and having scoring clubs in your hands to be able to attack some of these hole locations that now have a little bit more treachery around them. Yeah, I think every time I was trying to make a decision, I wanted the player thinking. Mm. And the idea of taking dead aim out here, there's some hole locations that you shouldn't take dead aim. No. And whether it's a little short, a little left, whatever, uh, the, the second green is massive. It's, it, it's awesome. Yeah. You could practice the 12 hole locations. <laughs> That's they could use so many it's, yeah. and they'd all be good. And I think, you know, some of them are going to play better as the greens mature and are, mm -hmm. you know, hold a bit better. Um, 
but I, I would ask the players to be you know, more thoughtful of how they attack some of this, where the shots they typically hit week in and week out, some of those aren't going to work here. They right. just aren't. Whether it be the green firmness, the shapes and contours of the greens, um, and I think the player that embraces the idea that there's some challenge and a bit more of, you know, let's Pinehurst, right? There are holes if you took on oh, yeah. and you missed an inch. Yeah. That, you, to a, a bit of an extreme at <laughs> But, you to know, point, that's, though, you, you know, sometimes you need to you know, play away a little bit. 100%. And this golf course, I think most professional golfers and, and caddies and, and people that have been around the game understand that this golf course was renovated quickly. Like, this is not – this golf course has not matured yet. It's not where it's going to be three or four years from now. This golf course this week – is going to have firmness. It's going to be playing harder than it ever will. So from your perspective, as someone who knows what the long-term vision is of this golf course, is it it's going to be difficult or easy for you to sit back this week with shots that you know aren't going to react like they will a year or two from now? Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm here for it. I'm just, just, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, green's firm like, this week. Fine with it. Yeah. We're fine with yeah. it. But Look, I mean, we, some players are going to be, you know, sure. Green firmness is the number one kryptonite for the modern player. You know, they just spend the ball so much. They hit the ball so high. You know, it's I so when it. you get the it's green firmness, out. then you, you got to be a little more thoughtful. Yeah. I, and I, yeah, I mean, I think about the average player. If you're, you know, sitting at home thinking about your game, how many times other than maybe a wedge or nine iron, are you flying it at a flag expecting it to yeah. one hop and stop? Mm -hmm. You know, you're bouncing it in, you're using contours. And I'd say even the, the tour players, when they go play in the Open Championship, the Scottish Open, whatever, they're using more of those kinds of skills. Yes, and which I think is fun. They you, love playing in that. Right. But once you come across the pond back, yeah. it's like, no, I can't do that. So this week with the firmness, I, I'd love to see some players thinking more of those kinds of shots. That's awesome. Andrew, I sort of fancy myself as an amateur grass nerd. You know, we, we, were, we, were, we, we try to do our best around here to, to you know, understand what these grasses are doing. But, of course, there's a level of expertise that's far above ours. That having been said, you and I were talking before we started this record, and I thought this was super interesting. You could look at this course and say, oh, okay, they had Zoysia fairways. They still have Zoysia fairways. They had Bermuda greens. They still have Bermuda greens. I think it's really interesting talking about the difference between Meyer Zoysia, which the fairways were going to Zorro Zoysia, and then going from the Mini Verde Bermuda to the Tip Eagle Bermuda. And we'd love if you could just kind of explain oh, yeah. what those differences are and the way they're going to behave. Well, and I think that's actually playing a lot into what the players are seeing. Mm. Because when you put a little more slope contour and, and you know character into the golf course, when the grasses play firmer and faster, it just changes your mindset. The old Meyer in the fairways You'd hit it and it land and that was about it. Maybe mm -hmm. it rolled out mm -hmm. a couple paces. Now the Zorro is a bit thinner blade, bladed grass. It sits a bit more upright. The ball wants to chase a little bit more. But it still will hold different than a Bermuda grass fairway or a bent grass fairway. Uh, great examples, 14 and 18, we put more slope in those landing zones trying to get the ball to hang a little bit so that those shots, you, you got to judge that lie. Uh, the ball's chasing, but it's not just running in the rough automatically. So mm -hmm. there's a nice balance there. With the greens, the Tiff Eagle tends to be a more stable turf for a warm season green than, than a lot of our other options at the moment. It's, uh, it, uh, you know, green, this year there's no green. They're so young. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And a number of players have talked about that in caddies because they're like, well, how do we play the grain? Right, there's, right. there's no it's grain. It's not <laughs> settled in yet. Yeah. So, um, but both of those grasses are, are really providing a, a great surface today and also great sustainability for the club. You, so, know, you know what's back? Like, you know how part of my take what's, is what's, what's back? back of the what's, week? What's back of the week? Zoysia's back. Zoysia's so back. Zoysia is back. You know how many clubs now that are, that are just dying to put Zoysia in? And it's not the Zoysia that we grew up on where you're in the golf cart and you're driving down the fairway and it's just going back and forth. Yeah. 
there's different strands of the zoysia now that that are fantastic. I know that uh, Shoal Creek we're looking at the stadium zoysia, yeah, which is good. a darker green, um, which I think you can get down pretty tight, kind of similar to what what East Lake has out here with the Zorro. Well, yeah, are, are you, are you, we have a different zoysia, zoysia grass around the greens, actually. Prism, the prism, it's right? Super yeah. tight, yeah. too. And that's actually was it's bred as so a cool. uh, putting surface zoysia. No so wonder. you could actually take it way down. We that's why it's going to play fast. Like that's yes. That's why it can play fast. Because most times when you think about zoysia, you think about that first bounce, like you were talking mm -hmm. about, that just doesn't go anywhere. But when you have something that's that tight, this prism zoysia, it first off it looks amazing. Mm -hmm. It's going to look good on TV. But it plays like really tight. The grain's not going to be a super big issue, but you're going to have to be able to clip it to be able to get spin on it. Well, and that's maybe this is getting a little off topic, but <laughs> now the grass nerd in me is kind of working here. Like, is zoysia for clubs in warmer climates? Is that are we going to see more zoysia greens and things like that, or is is it like is that becoming a competitor to there's Bermuda? Here, I'd say, in, like in a, I think there's one in Atlanta yeah. that I. Yeah, I think. We're seeing where it's going. Yeah, right? the the technology and the breeding and and what the the growers are bringing to the table is outstanding. I mean, we've even got some of those uh, zoysia grasses they're putting on bunker faces and not mowing an entire year wow. because they just don't grow, which is phenomenal for maintenance and cost. And wow. so there's a number of things we're trying. The problem is there's no magic grass. There's no magic turf. <laughs> it's it all takes labor. It all takes yeah. work. It all takes um, you know some sort of inputs uh -huh. you know from either fertilizer pesticides whatever to be good yeah that it's funny you know i, I just we're 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 so many things on this pod but what we are we're, we're grass guys we're big know? grass guys <laughs> print the t-shirt zoysia is back right. zoysia <laughs> definitely zoysia is back so where are you going to watch this tournament from? Are you going to be here all week? Are you going to watch on your TV and giggling? Are you, where, where are you going to be? <laughs> yeah, the plan's to be here all week unless I get run out of town. Uh, <laughs> we were lucky enough to, to be able to rent a house here nearby that we can walk to the course. So I have my team here, uh, here nice. during the beginning how, of the week. How and big my is the team? Coming. I've got, uh, got, I guess, got four guys on staff, my wife, uh, who helps a ton. And then we just hired uh, another guy that'll start in January. So we've got some really good uh, That's team awesome. members. And, uh, and, and yeah. your son to watch the great class. Son, yeah, yeah, he's, he's in town at the moment. <laughs> well, we, we just assumed your son was coming in just to see the fine work that you've done on this golf course. Then we find out, no, he's just here for the creator's class. <laughs> Absolutely. He cannot wait. He could be watching Charlie play next year for all we know out here. <laughs> let's, let's start the movie right now. Let's get the campaign going. <laughs> they said you have to be lower than a four handicap. So your handicap management, I know you're a one now, but the world's worst one. Yes. Yeah. Uh, we, we need to have someone from the USGA on next to talk about how that is. Uh, <laughs> score penalty system works so we'll, we'll get to that soon all right man uh, on the way out i know you got some other projects coming up so we might as well talk about the project that's near and dear to my heart which is shoal creek uh just overall impressions of what you've when you get on the property at shoal creek and then to what where we are now and kind of what you expect that place to uh, eventually be like yeah, so uh, an amazing place. Hall Thompson, his vision there, yes. incredible. I met Hall as a kid. <laughs> Did you? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. he's a, quite a character. Um, yeah, so, you know, trying to make sure that we stay true to the nature of his founding vision. Uh, you know, a great place to go spend, uh, you know, some time playing the game of golf with some buddies, right? Having yes. a good time. Uh, hitting all the shots that you can think of. That's something that's really top of mind, trying to add more variety mm -hmm. to the experience. Uh, a little bit of what you see here, a little more movement in some of the fairways, bringing the creek back. Yes. Shoal Creek. Shoal yes. Creek. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Shoal creek. Feels appropriate. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we're going to open open the creek back up on 7. Because um, we had that tornado go through. Because yeah. that had to be very odd as an architect when you get in and one of our, I guess, 15 holes don't match the rest of the golf course because a tornado ripped through and took out thousands of trees. Insane. Right? <laughs> Insane. So all the greens will get reworked. Uh, we actually found, in this case, Bob Cup, who was working with Nicholas, had uh, drawn sketches of all the greens and had mm. actually drawn like a perspective of them. Oh, that is so So sick. we're not just going to sit there and like build exactly what he had on there because things have even changed in that period of time. But we've used that as a bit of inspiration. Oh, which is cool. kind of cool. And uh, yeah, so I think just more variety, more fun for the average player. A little tougher for you. Yeah, your buddies there. great. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, I think, it, look, it's got a major championship pedigree. 
And we want to embrace that mm -hmm. as well as just the, the great place that it is. Gets me excited, Charlie. Gets me excited. As it should. This guy's playing the member guest coming up, so he's he's excited, too, <laughs> to get his first eyes on it. Uh, Got to give a shout-out to the superintendent out at Shoal Creek, James Carroll. That guy's... He's a good man. He's epic. He's the, also a guy I talk grass with, James and I. <laughs> I was there Monday with him. Yeah. Talk, talking grass? Talking yeah, grass. Talking grass. <laughs> new, new segment, talking grass. <laughs> All right. Andrew, thank you for your time. Uh, I know you got to start doing some scouting for this creator classic to make sure your son's all dialed in with him too. Lines, yeah. <laughs> well, I appreciate your time, man. It's, it's been a lot of fun to, to kind of get to know, get to know you and then just this golf course, what we're expecting this week. So I appreciate you. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Andrew. Well, here we are wrapping up our final FedEx Cup playoff episode of The Smiley Show. Big thanks to Keegan Bradley and Andrew Green for taking the time to join us here uh, in this this little room here outside of the pro shop at East Lake. I think they're making some smoothies in the kitchen behind us. Yeah, it's cozy. It's cozy. It here. is cozy. <laughs> Definitely cozy. <laughs> uh, nice cozy setup. But we, we've covered we've covered the golf course. You know, you've heard us talk to several players this week. Xander Shoffley, Sam Burns included. You're pretty well previewed at this point. So here's where we're going to get right to our one and done picks. And really, this is we're in an interesting spot, Smiley, because most one and done leagues at this point are done because they're doing it off of money or FedEx Cup points. And obviously this week is very different because the, the, the purse is scaled, you know, along with starting strokes. So it's kind of tough to parse mm -hmm. that out. So here's where we've arrived for our one and done format. We've kicked around some ideas on the show and I think this one works is we're taking the FedEx Cup points we accrued over the course of the season, slotting ourselves into the standings list. Mm -hmm. So I would be third, <clears throat> you would be fifth. So that means I'm going to take the same amount of starting strokes, so the seventh or the third place finisher. Sure. Okay, let me pick. Let me do a, do a little pick up there. <laughs> I got caught up there. You're taking the third. That's for you. Yes. Now. Yeah. So I was, yeah. So what that means is I'm taking the amount of starting strokes the third place finisher has. That's currently Hideki Matsuyama. So I am starting at seven under. Okay. You are taking the fifth place uh, finisher strokes. That's Ludwig Oberg, five under. There's only two shots, baby. Let's o go. Only two shots. <laughs> and then the player that we are each selecting, we're going to take their, their non-adjusted score and then adjust with our starting strokes, and that will determine the season-long Smiley Show one and done champion. This feels like a Scotty Scheffler situation from your standpoint, with you with a, a bit of a comfortable lead over me at this point. And it's as, as Scotty says, is it really a season long race? You know, if if, you know, I won X amount of times and I think you could march on that on that boat with Scotty. But I tell you what, I would love to, to drink out of the, the trophy on Sunday night. Yeah, I, I would like to either run back Scotty's quotes or give a few of my own here because I am realizing and looking at my list of guys I've used that I am. Almost entirely hosed at this point because you still have a few. Uh, I have so many. Ammo. I have way too many bullets in the chamber, and we're going to learn for that for next year because <laughs> yes, I think yes. I overthought the one and done all season long, just trying to save up, save up, save up. So if I could use, I mean, I wish I could just hand you one of my guys because I, I think I still have like half of the top ten in the world still available. Yeah, th this would be great. Like if, if what the PGA Tour did is they did not reveal the FedEx Cup format until the last event, and the yeah. left guys figure that out, it'd be very interesting. That is what's happened to me. So you, I believe, have the first pick this week. And so you are at five under. And who are you taking? Well, I thought about this pick like from day one. And this is this was a, a no brainer decision. And you know how hard it was this year to not take this player because he was playing as good as golf of anyone. I already used, and this isn't Scotty Shuffler. We're talking about Xander Shuffle. Mm. I saved him up for Eastlake in the Tour Championship. But I did kind of forget that they did uh, do a restoration project, so it's not the same East Lake that did Xander's you played on. So were you at all talking about it's a completely new golf course? Yeah, I don't no, even have a tree to aim at. I have Xander Schauffele, and, <laughs> and I don't care. I it's better situation than any of your picks can be because I have uh, the player that probably you know he's coming in with a little bit more form, I would say, than Scotty coming into this week. So uh, I feel really strongly about my chances to uh, win the one and done title in year one. I think. Xander could be playing Mars Golf and Country Club and probably would do pretty well. <laughs> He'll be just fine. Yeah. So that's, I, I listen, I wish I still had Xander. My list, I've used Scotty, Xander, Ludwig, Rory, Colin, Wyndham, Sam Burns, Patrick Cantlay, Sung J M, Tony Finau, 
Victor Hovland, Akshay Batia. I'm I'm pretty. I've I've gone through most of the list here. So here's what I'm looking at is I've got <laughs> yeah. Who are we got? <laughs> well, who are we between? I'm just just generally curious. If we're, if we're looking at the top of the board, I still have Hideki and Keegan at my disposal. God. So do I go with good show mojo, the the smiley show bump, and rock with Keegan? Do I go with Hideki Matsuyama? Who is playing for stacks of cash and stacks of pancakes? It just week. came just came off an injury. Just came off an injury. Didn't even play BMW. But pancake therapy. <laughs> okay. It's a real thing. <laughs> can fix that back right up. Uh, or do I go further down the list? And I and because because obviously it's this is just like a their their score without starting strokes. So do I yeah. go for like do I go for JT who who has a lot of ground to make up and needs a big lot to play for? I think. I think I'm going to go with, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go with the, the, the longest running friend of the show on the Smiley Show, three-time recurring it. guest. I'm going to use Justin Thomas this week at East Lake. A lot to play for. Got us play his way into the, to the President's Cup picture. I think he's currently 19th on the points list. Big week could do wonders for him. I'm, gonna, I'm going with Justin Thomas this week. All right. And seven shots. Okay. I just got to have Xander Shoffley win by three. That's all you got to do. So, JT, play well out there, buddy. Uh, that is, that's the conclusion of our one and done. I don't think we're going to do a fall season of one and done. I don't feel like that's... No. We'll, we'll see you back in uh, the <laughs> we'll see century. You in Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you in Hawaii. But is, why don't we just give just a couple suggestions on, sure. on players that we do like. And I, I will, I'll say this, and I thought, Keegan, I thought Keegan would have been a great pick just with the, how high he hits the golf ball. I think this course sets up, again, like you have to hit fairways. And I know we say this every week is like, well, we're always trying to find the guy who's accurate. You need somebody who's long and accurate this week. Hmm. So that's where my brain kicks in with, with Rory Ludwig. Like these are two guys that hit it up in the air, high into the greens. Um, so I, I really do think like Ke- Keegan Ludwig and, uh, and Rory are three guys that just kind of just, uh, stand out to me a little bit. That was the one piece of sound from Scotty's presser in discussing the course, uh, in discussing him potentially playing down the 10th fairway uh, when he when he's playing the 18th hole, which we've just now learned they've made the 10th internal out of bounds this week. So mm-hmm. he will not have that option. So, uh, But he said that one of the only guys he saw hold the 18th green playing from the proper fairway was Rory McIlroy. Mm-hmm. So that theory absolutely holds water. Um, and just hearing some interesting... Had a lot of success here too, Rory. Yeah, this is, this is a good place just for him. General. Yeah. Good. So I, I, I like all those. I mean, I think, yeah, it's it's the best 30 players on tour this season. So I, I feel like at this point, all those you, you mentioned are, are, are good shouts. Maybe a Wyndham Clark. This guy's got the, the most, I feel like. Sam Burns? Sam Burns, to me, is the guy that just has had, I feel like, the best run. Um, I Absolutely. Would say He's that played his way in each I week. feel like Sam Burns would be the guy that if you're looking for somebody who's uh, a little down the board, I thought he was – he's not starting at two under, is he? Oh, he's starting at four under. He's yeah. starting at four under. I mean, I, I still feel like six shots back, I, I feel like Sam Burns is the guy who's going to finish inside the top four at the end of the week. Do you, do you think – do you like – going a little further down, uh, do you like like an Adam Scott continuing to maintain some momentum that I, he's built? I just – I worry a little bit about height and the greens mm. with, with most guys down the board. Uh, I really do. Um, I think the guys at the top are the guys that hit it harder, hit it higher, and I'm kind of leaning that way this week. So, like, guys, like, you know, we always say, you know, for the most part, hit the fairways. And, and like, so you would think, like, Russell Henley, you know, guys like that. But, like, Tony Finau, he's a he's a player that I like this week just because he hits it hard. His iron game, he can control trajectories and hit it up in the air if he needs to. But uh, I'm not picking anybody that doesn't have, like, really strong landing angles in the greens. Well, there you have it. Pretty uh, solid run down there for anyone trying to sprinkle some cash around. Yeah. In addition to our uh, our season-ending one-and-done FedEx Cup <laughs> on the Smiley Show. Uh, so we're wrapping here, Smiley. This is the last one on the road. we got to go back home. Here's your, your final opportunity to provide some final thoughts from Eastlake. Oh, man. Uh, what a run it's been. Thank you for all who've listened to all of our shows. Thank you for all the hard work for our team behind the scenes with Brian Stansfield, Jackson Brown, uh, two guys that have made things happen. Charlie, obviously, get, helping getting these these videos turned around. So it's been a really good run for the playoffs. We're excited to kind of do more of this next year as well. Um, but really, I think just this tour championship, I'm, I'm excited to see who's going to win. I, I think it's going to set itself up for potentially who's going to win player of the year. I know I've already mm-hmm. kind of 
put in stone that it's, it's Scotty's year. I still feel like that recency bias of Xander, uh, if he was to win, could definitely skew the scales a little bit as far as what that race might look like at the end of the year. But um, I think it'd be it'd be a fitting ending to the season if we had a showdown between Scotty Xander and then throw in another player on a Sunday. So I'm um, hoping that for all golf fans that we get that and we get a really fun tour championship. And then uh, we're into football season and, and we're going to be doing some picks and stuff for that as well. That's right. Stay tuned on that front. We got a couple of little uh, pools cooking, maybe a little uh, a pick em game for yeah. college football and a little survivor pool for the NFL. Uh, so stay tuned to our socials to, to get some information on how you can join us and play in those contests. But that's that's about it. I'm gonna go find Andrew Green's son, and then go walk around and watch some creators <laughs> play some golf here in East Lake. I there feel like is, is the play. So we we really appreciate all of you joining us these past few weeks, uh, watching and listening, and we'll have a, a recap of this event plus some some previews, some thoughts about what the Presidents Cup, the final mm-hmm. six picks for each team should be on Monday. And and by the way, uh, to you, uh, happy game day uh, early. You know, happy early ha- game day. Happy yes. game day. Are, when does LSU play there? We play game? Sunday night, so oh, I'm going to probably right. tape the show, uh, or excuse me, tape the game, drive home, turn my phone off, and then just watch it like it's live. We have Minnesota Thursday night, 8 p.m. Cool. Yeah, nice. <laughs> <laughs> so many people oh, like, oh, my God. Oh, yeah, great. Max Johnson, please. Yo, yo, you said you play him at home? Uh, road. Oh, so you gotta have the gopher uh, on the video board for like the kicks. Have you seen the gopher? Just like dude. Yes. Have you seen it? Oh, and we're we're a one and a half point favorite, which is the ultimate oh. trap. <laughs> oh my god. Ultimate trap. Yeah. We're taking the gophers, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Hammer the Gophers. Uh, I just hope. I just hope we get out of there with the win. But yeah, I'm going to be rowing the boat so hard. <laughs> <laughs> that is. Uh, I, I'm very, very cautiously waiting into this college football season. We, there's a really good chance we're both 0 and 1 uh, to start the year. Who do y'all play? We play USC in Vegas. Ooh, yeah, that's not great either. I mean, we're a favorite, but we've lost every home opener since 19. So. Yeah, football season. <laughs> so, glad, so glad to be back. Uh, back with Titus. <laughs> well, a lot of fun this week. And uh, yeah, well, we'll talk to you very shortly here with some uh, tour championship recap, some President's Cup preview. Uh, excited to do it all and, and, and get ready for the, the final marquee competition of the golf year in, in about a month or so. Thanks for watching and listening. We'll talk to you back here soon. You know, I listen to this podcast. It's really cool. And all of our First time. fans and subscribers, but. Make sure you like and subscribe. It's cool to see what you guys are doing. I know golf fans appreciate it, but we, we do too, so please keep it up. For all the good people on YouTube, like and subscribe. You guys have some good takes, so I'm happy to come on and, and shoot the